Well, it's a, an incredible honor to be with all of you tonight. I am very, very honored and humbled. My life really began in Minnesota, and I have to tell you, I'm about as Midwesterner as they get. My dad was a research scientist at the 3M company, and he loved to talk about his work, which instilled in me a great love of science. But at that time, girls weren't expected to like science, much less develop a career in science. But despite that, my parents inspired in me that I could dream, I dared to dream, that one day I could become a physician scientist. But I have to tell you, never in my wildest dreams did I ever dream that I would be a distinguished Bostonian. So I'm thrilled to be one of you. I, I had heard that this could be a really tough town to break into because Boston is the kind of place where people trace their ancestry back to the pilgrims. My roots here in Boston date back to 1981 when I did my medical training here. So I'm thrilled, as Adam Weiner told me tonight, you really are a Bostonian now, and I'm, and I'm delighted to be so. They say that if you are judged by the company you keep, then I'm very, very fortunate to be recognized in this extraordinary way. I'm humbled to be here tonight with Diane and Paul, who are also being honored. Diane, I've enjoyed getting to know you over the past couple of years through our professional interactions. I so admire your intelligence, your humility, and I have tremendous respect for your passionate advocacy. So Diane, congratulations to you on the award as well. And with that said, Paul, tonight is about you and all that you have given us over the past 18 years. There could be no better ambassador for this great city. Paul was one of the first individuals who reached out to me and welcomed me back to Boston in 2010. He's been an exceptional guide and a terrific friend. So Paul, thank you for your years of service and the transformative work that you've done on behalf of our community. And of course, there are many extraordinary past distinguished Bostonian honorees, many of whom have supported the vision and the mission of Brigham and Women's Hospital. They include the Brigham's legendary champion, Jack Connors, who I suspect has helped just about everybody in this room. They include Robert and Myra Kraft and the entire Kraft family, who through multiple generations have supported the Brigham's work forward and Ann Finucane, who you just heard about, the vice chair of our board, who is a trusted advisor, ally, and friend. And the list goes on. Gloria White Hammond, Michelle Spring, Governor Deval Patrick, who I think is now known as Mr. Diane Patrick. <laughs> it's truly an honor to be in the company of all of these distinguished Bostonians. And I would be remiss, however, if I didn't mention one individual in the room who, to me, embodies the great spirit of our great city. John, you pour your heart and soul into causes that you are so passionate about. And I'm so grateful that the Brigham is just one of the many groups in town that you, John Fish, have benefited. We have so benefited from your dedication. John, thank you for all that you've done for me. And I want to thank you for all that you continue to do for the Brigham. Thank you, John. Over the years, I've learned that success is achieved through collaboration. And I feel truly blessed to have the partnership of so many in this room. I want to have a special shout out for my friends and colleagues from Brigham Women's Hospital who are here tonight. Each of you are extraordinary. You take amazing care of our patients, and I suspect there are a few of you here in the room tonight. Over the winter, we've had our sets of challenges, but each of you have stepped up to the plate in extraordinary ways. And I couldn't be more proud of you or more proud to call you my friends. Thank you so much. And now I, without question, uh, there's one person in this room 
uh, with whom I've had the most successful partnership, and that's my husband, Gary. Gary, I'm so grateful to you for your unwavering love and support and for the magnificent life that we have built together. Gary, too, is a physician scientist, so he, he gets this lifestyle. And in fact, Gary and I met here in Boston at Brigham and Women's in 1981. But you and I have seen firsthand that those who are committed to medicine and science and those who work together can define the path forward in light of the new economic realities facing the healthcare industry. And looking around this room, I'm extraordinarily confident that we as a city have all the necessary elements we need to pave the way. We've attracted the brightest and the best minds in the world to Boston, and that exists particularly in the healthcare arena. We have a thriving culture of civic engagement, which so sustains many of our institutions and powers our progress. And we have a great entrepreneurial spirit that encourages us to take risks and try new ideas, even if we don't quite know where they're going to go yet. So this is a tremendous time of enormous potential for the health sciences, and I, for one, and am excited to see where we go in the future. Thank you again for this tremendous honor.